Guys, welcome back to our off-grid homestead here in North Idaho. <laughs> Today on our live stream, we've got a special guy here. If you saw the title, you saw that he is the Yak Man. That's right, look at his hat there. See his hat? That's the same hat Seth wears. You know why Seth wears that hat? Because it's his. That's right. It's from his channel. So before we get started here, go ahead and put in the um, put in the chat there where you're from. I'd love to see where you're from and uh, get some shout outs to some people. Um, some cities, wherever you happen to be from. Okay, so let us know down in the chat below. So this is David from Imagine Acre Wood. We are here, let me flip the camera here for you guys real quick. Columbus, Ohio. Sweet, hey Jacob. Let's see, all right, we're here with David and his family. His kids are right over in here. There's one, nope, yep, there's one. There's one in the red chair, the blue chair, and another one over there. His wife is Finland, cool, Peter. But anyway, his wife, is in with Julie there in the house talking about girl stuff and playing with babies. Um, but David's here, he's gonna tell us uh, for a minute here or five minutes or maybe 25, who knows, kind of their story. Worship at the Sandpoint Church of Christ here in town. And he has got an interesting story about how him and his family moved off grid. So David, tell us about, tell us your story and what you do on your, on your YouTube channel. If I didn't mention, he has a YouTube channel. Um, yeah, on the hot spot. So uh, we are the family from Imagine Acre Wood, guys. And uh, we just have a modest YouTube channel where we kind of show what we do on the homestead on a regular basis and, and touch on just some things that we're interested in. Um, so originally we are California transplants, kind of like everybody else in Idaho. So, um, But we did move to Idaho about uh, almost 15 years ago now. Um, I think it's 15 years this year that we moved to Idaho and um, we lived in town for a while, Coeur d'Alene, and uh, I was in retail management, um, Lisa was in banking, and um, we lived there until last year when we became off-grid homesteaders. So um, it was a long journey for us just kind of doing things while starting a family. Um, and uh, so, but eventually we did, uh, we were able to, to kind of penny pinch and save and, and get off grid. So um, that's our story. Now we raise yaks, which is kind of weird, uh, and goats and chickens, and uh, we just do the off grid thing. So you guys have moved in, like you bought your property, right? You have like 10 acres, is that yeah, right? Yeah, 10 acres. So you got uh -huh. 10 acres, you bought it, had a cabin on it already. Yep. But you moved in in the middle of winter. We did, yeah. Yeah, what was that like? Yeah, so um, it was not this past January, but the previous January. And it was the end of January going into February. And we actually had some record snow through that kind of one month stretch. And so when we went in to move into the property, um, we were actually entirely snowed out of the property. So we had to park um, somewhere about a quarter mile uh, down the road. And then we hiked into the property with a gear sled and all that kind of stuff. So we actually moved into the cabin by hauling in gear on a gear sled on our back. So, so that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. And, and so let's see, kind of you have, you have um, goats, chickens, Geese, you got a couple of geese, yeah, right? like guard geese. geese, yeah, and um, and yaks, right? And so yaks. kind of yak is your thing. Your logo on your hat's a yak. That's right. That's right. right. And so, where are yaks from, and why would you want to raise yaks? Like, what? Why should anybody here want to raise a yak? Yeah. So, like, um, so well, yaks. They're from the Himalayas, I believe. Himalayas. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, Asia, they're from, and um, they're related to a cow. So um, similar that you can actually breed yaks and cows together, but what do you get if um, you breed a cow and a yak? Uh, What's that called? Um, I don't know. A yow. a yow. A yow. A yow. A yow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a a cack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, okay. they're from they're from Asia, and um, th for the reason we chose to uh, raise yaks is because we have kind of irregular terrain on our property, and they do better than um, your standard. Uh, beef cattle in that kind of terrain um, as well as weather they're good in weather um, and for us they're they're multi-purpose as well um, they will be meat in the future but they're longer to to market on on meat than cows but they also provide wool and actually we're getting ready to harvest wool um, here in the next couple of weeks off of our our bigger yak so um, Lisa wants to in the future maybe try and milk a yak really but we don't have yaks nice enough to milk yet okay 
So they're a little bit more aggressive than a cow, would you say? Or? I would say so, but they can be uh, as docile if worked. Like okay. if you raise them as bottle yaks, bottle okay. babies. Right. So like you would a calf, um, you just raise it on the bottle and then you'll have much more friendly. Ours all came from a very large herd. And so that's why they didn't have like a lot of friendly. interaction with people. None. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. And so with the with the so like with the yak then, as far as like raising it and market it and stuff like that, then you have the meat, of course, yep. right? You can eat a yak. You could milk a yak. Could milk a yak, and the milk apparently makes some of the best butter in the world. That's where uh, the idea of butter in your tea and then butter in oh, your really? coffee comes from the himalayans and, and 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 yak milk yak milk yeah oh, yak butter yak butter cool okay so maybe we'll get to do like a, a taste test video sometime on yak butter yeah coffee. we're hoping indy so we had calves last year um and indy is our first one that we're raising up ourselves so we're hoping indy our young calf will be in the future we'll able to get milk out of her um, but, uh, this, this spring when we have calves, uh, it'll be bottle calves. We're going to be raising bottle calves. Cool. Jessica here said that yak meat is the best. It's really good, actually. Jessica, so tell me, tell us in the chat here, where have you eaten yak meat at and why did you eat it? Like, tell us your little, tell us your story briefly in your, in the chat. Um, okay. So then you got the wool as well, right? Which is totally different than a cow. Right. 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 So, um, what, uh, what's the... What, do, what would you do with it? So the wool, uh, well, our, our plan to use it is to, to spin it into textile yarn. So um, just basically process it, um, clean it, process it, and then spin it, have, have it either spun or do the spinning ourselves, depending on if the girls want to learn how to do that. Okay. Okay. Um, so like with the, like the wood, the wood wheel that yeah, spins and yeah, stuff like you, you got the pedals. And and you, you, oh, cool. you, you, I don't know how exactly it's done. I've never uh -huh. done it, but uh, watching the ladies, um, what is that? The North Idaho Homestead Ladies Group. Yeah. You guys can check them out too online. They're on Facebook. Yeah, they're on Facebook. Okay. Uh huh. Um, they uh, they do classes up here and stuff like that. On so how to do that? Wanna... Like so, like it's the same as like sheep wool, I guess. Yeah. Same yeah. process. Yeah. Same process. Huh. What about like straw to gold? Could we do that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Who did the straw magic? to gold? What? Hey, Sarah. Yeah. Who who uh, well, who spun straw into gold? Um, the, the, I don't know the girl's name, but it was Rumpelstiltskin. Rumpelstiltskin. That's right. Yeah. We'll try that maybe. That'd be cool if we could do that. South Korea. So That's cool. That's a long ways away. Yeah. What's your uh, your name? What's your name there in, in English letters there, South Korea? All right, so let's go ahead and um, we'll go ahead and answer some questions here for a little bit. And then um, some of that, like whatever you want to ask David about his homestead, his family, his yaks, you can ask him whatever you want and he'll choose whatever questions as they're coming up to answer and ask me or whatever. We'll answer some questions. If you got questions for Sarah or Seth or David's kids, maybe they'd want to answer a question, maybe. Who knows? Right over there at the camp. You guys want to come over here and just show them who you are? Come say hi. Come on, come say hi. I had yak meat in Tibet. E E E I B. Wow, that's cool. It's a little chewy compared to the beef. Yeah, that could be the age of it, right? Yeah. That could be how it was butchered. Right. The how cut it was of cooked. meat. Yeah. As tell, well. Tell them who hi, you are. Hi, I'm Soraya. Yeah, if you guys haven't seen David's channel, come you can here, go girls, there. Come on. Go over. There's a link Honky. to his video down below. And she's got a video plan. I do. <laughs> Don't you have a video playing, uh, um, what's um, that thing called? Violin. A violin. It's not a fiddle? No. It's a violin. Yeah. What's the difference? I don't think it's a difference. It's just the method of how you play. Okay. All right. Well, there you go. See, we got a musician here. Not a magician, right? No. A musician. Okay. Cool. What about you? Wanna, you you want to go now? Are you like, <laughs> like get me off camera now? <laughs> what, what, who are you? Hi, I'm Audrey. Hi. Um, I, I don't play anything really. <laughs> <laughs> I, was gonna, I was gonna play the keyboard. Yeah? I got one for Christmas. I'm going to learn how, I'm gonna try how to play. I'm gonna learn. How to play the keyboard? Yeah. Sweet. Mm -hmm. And then I also wanna play the piano once, I, um, once I'm done with that and I master it. Can I ask you a really important question? Yeah. I'm gonna ask her a really important question, okay? Okay. <laughs> what is your favorite thing about living on your homestead? Um, besides like, besides family, oh, okay. 
like the favorite um, thing outside of family um, and um actually um it would probably be um um tough question you put it on the spot how about how about this i made it too hard how about this what is one thing that you like about it not the favorite thing but okay. one thing that you like um um probably i'm um, feeding the chicken Feeding the chickens? Except I don't like when the roosters run out through me. They chase you sometimes? Yeah. More like all the time. Really? <laughs> wow. That's crazy, huh? Mm -hmm. You want to come over? Shy. Okay, come you're on. over there. What's your name? And who are, and you look, you're the same person, aren't you? No. You're a different person? Yeah. You didn't just change your shirt? No. Are you sure? Yeah, we split the screen. Come up here a little closer. <laughs> What's your name? Addison. Are you a twin? Uh-huh. Okay. Addison, do you have a hobby? Mm, yeah. What's your hobby? Tell um, them. Tell them what your hobby is. Running. Running? Yeah. Really? Are you fast? Mm-hmm. Cool. What is, what is one thing that you like about living on your homestead? Um, playing outside. Playing outside. You have a pretty cool yard to play in, huh? Do you play on those big rocks? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have any forts? Mm, no. Any caves or anything you go into? What about no? that one that you guys have built over in the rocks? What is that? That's not a fort? That's what a hideaway. It? That's a dollhouse. Uh -uh. No? What is it? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a secret. <laughs> if you Apparently. tell them, then they're all going to be there playing, so we don't want them to come over and play there, do we? It's our secret fort. <laughs> That's funny. Thank you so much for hanging out. Um, before we get to the questions, I didn't tell you this yet, and I didn't tell oh. you guys this. I don't think I did. Maybe I did, but anyway. Surprises. So, you guys saw our tractor before, and um, the guy that I bought it from, he lives right up, up the street, he like up, up the street, up the highway, before Naples. Okay. And um, he has like a hundred and some odd acres, like up against the mountain, up against that mountain over there. Right, like you got to kind of go up the mountain. He's got this big, this big like landing up there where his house is. Gotcha. But um, but he has a wolf den on his property and four wolves that live in it. Really? Yeah. He said like it's a real. He wasn't playing around. He's yeah. like, It's a real wolf den, and he sees them running around his property. Wow. Yeah. So, so he lives cool. out there full time then, or is it just his property? No, he lives out he there. He lives out there. Yeah. Wow. That's mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. So anyway. There really are wolves here, Either. and they're only like they exist, guys. As, as a crow flies, probably like I don't know, seven eight miles away. Yeah. All right, let's see here. What do we got for the questions? Wow, we got a lot of Ooh. a lot here. Wow. Okay, let's go up here to the beginning. We're doing fine, thank you. Good morning, Columbus, Ohio, Finland, Finland. Message retracted. Good morning. Let's see. Hey, we're doing good. Thank you for loving our channel. It's awesome. Here with some friends. Let's see. Oh, Sarah's from the United States of America. Ha ha ha. Hi, Sarah. Let's see. How are you guys? We're doing good. Morning. Stay tuned from Indonesia. Okay, any questions you guys got for David or Yaks or what they're doing on their homestead, what their channel's about or anything, go ahead and ask them and we will get to them. We're scrolling through starting at the beginning here. Um, and if you could write in English, that'd be best. Let's see. Anything? Good night. Good night. So it's nighttime in Indonesia right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a long ways away. Oh, Brisbane. Oh. I think uh, um, the other side. I don't know. Now I'm of Australia. I don't. Is there anything even... over there? There is. <laughs> no, no, the other side. Hey, thanks for the super chat. So kind. Very much. Thank you. Um, no, the city that's on the other side from Sydney. Um, I can't even think of it. Sorry, guys. You guys let us know in the chat here. Yes, what's, Bruce. What's way over there on the other side of Australia from the Sydney side? All right, let's come back up here. Let's see. From Indonesia, Indonesia. Um, sometime when I grow up, I want to start my own off-grid homestead. Got any advice? Um, start saving now. Start saving now. Work hard. 
Um, the attack dog just came running up the bat. <laughs> uh, work hard and uh, stack your pennies. And, and if that's really what you want and that's the, the, the goal you want to accomplish, that's the only way you're going to be able to accomplish it um, unless you have a rich uncle somewhere that's going to give you his, his property when he passes away. Yeah, you know? uh, that's right. Yeah, and like, and, and also think about property values differ a lot, you know, where you are. And so, you know, you want a homestead in California, well, that's going to cost you a ton. Yeah. But you want a homestead in Missouri, it's going to be really cheap. You want to do it in Idaho, it's going to be kind of medium. You know, and so you got to think about regulations that you want as well. Yeah. Um, some states have stricter re stricter regulations. Some states you can't catch water. Some states you can catch water. Um, you know, building permits and codes. That's all something that you want to think about, unless you're you know just buying something that's already made. But even then, it's something you you want to think about because yeah. you're always on the homestead needing to do new things and new additions, and and uh, so that's something to take into account as well. Yeah, animal restrictions. Yeah. Right? Like if you want to have. 10 pigs you may not be able to have 10 pigs right Maybe you can have like one or none right you know right. some places like in in town i mean you know i mean like when i think of homesteading i'm thinking of a bigger piece of property you know at least a, at least an acre mm -hmm. right and and out in the country somewhere thank you for another super chat there very kind um but you know some people do want to try to homestead in a city you know and so what we were in tennessee you couldn't have bees or chickens in the city limits really yeah Yep. Wow. So, or guinea yeah. pigs or, you know, something that you could <laughs> hide in your garage, you yeah, know, right. that your neighbors aren't going to tattle on you and say you have. That's right. Yeah, so, so it's interesting. You know, you just got to look at all the rules, like like David was saying, and homeowners associations, covenants, things like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, why not live cheaper in Asia? Um, it would be, I mean, some places are going to be cheaper to live in Asia. Actually, though, you know what was interesting? When we were in, in Jogjakarta, Indonesia, right? Land in Jogjakarta is more expensive. You just go on, if, if you don't believe me, just go on to like a real estate website for Indonesia, go to Jogjakarta and look at land prices, right? Per hectare. And then come on to like realtor.com or Zillow and look at land prices in Northern Idaho or Missouri or Florida, right? Um, Arkansas. And you're gonna find that the land prices are actually cheaper here than they are there. And, but as a foreigner, like you can't even purchase land there. You know, you can't, like I can't own own the land in Indonesia. You could buy an apartment in Jakarta, but who wants to do that? I don't know. Somebody probably does though. And soon you have somebody bring up taxes too about how you don't own your land in the United States. Oh yeah, you? yeah, sure. <laughs> That's true, yeah. You know, but. It, it, it's a trade-off everywhere, guys. No, no place is perfect. No place is going to be 100% exactly what you want. It's just finding that balance, you yeah. know, it, especially if, I mean, if resources are finite and you, you don't have just in an open purse, you know, that you can just spend indiscretionately, you're going to have to make some compromises somewhere. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like, so say, like, just take us, right? I mean, our house isn't even finished. Right. You know, you got to do it in stages. Yeah. I mean, if... If you want, like, we're, we're debt-free. You guys are debt-free, right? Yeah, yeah. And so um, if we wanted to take out a loan from the bank, we could have a finished house. Right. You know, but that's not what we want to do. Yeah, then you're beholden to the bank. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then you really don't own it. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. Marilyn, nice <laughs> to see you here. All right, let's come back up here and see what we got. Oh, somebody's coming with Ooh, a sp special delivery. Yeah. Thank Somebody you. Somebody said Melbourne. It's Perth. Perth. Thank you, Craig. Culver. Perth is what I was thinking of. So is Brisbane on the Perth side or over on the um, the other side there, the Sydney side? All right. Living the Dream Homestead. I saw them somewhere on here. We'll get to you. We're, you're coming up, I'm sure. Let's see. What else we got here? Where? Oh, St uh, Seth and Sarah. They are... Seth and Sarah, they're right over there. Roast the marshmallows and having fun. Campfire. Campfiring it out. David has um, four kids. Double what we have. Four. We have a, a four-month-old son that was, well, I don't know if he's four months. He was born on Christmas Day. Cool. Yeah. Faith Fit Phi, right here. Opposite of, opposite you, Perth. So it's on the opposite side. Um, she is like a super faithful subscriber. Co a commenter she always has positive comments to leave 
And um, if you are not yet checking out David's channel. She has. I, I recognize she has? her. Yeah, okay. she's left some great comments. Cool, yeah. yeah. Yeah, she's always an encouragement. Thank you so much for that. Um, let's see. Oh, what is the most of your struggles during starting a homestead? That's a good question. You want to go first? You go ahead. Oh, all right, all right. I'll go first. The most, biggest struggle starting the homestead. Um, I think for us, part of it's going to be how flexible you are, right? And so we are, as our family, we're really flexible. We've, we've been flexible and kind of forced into being flexible, living in, you know, developing countries. And so um, to, to live with no electricity, right, to live um, with an outdoor shower and, you know, outdoor toilet and things like that really wasn't a big deal for us because... I don't know, it just wasn't, you know? Um, being dirty a lot in the beginning, you know? It wasn't a big deal. But I think the biggest struggle probably was um, learning. Some of the things, you know, learning everything before we got here. Because when we got to our property on, like, um, June 1st, we had to have a warm place to live before it starts snowing. Right. I mean, like... That was it. We had tents and we had to be in there. And so we had to have as much information as we could before we got there. And that was, that was difficult and, um, like a little nerve wracking. Yeah. You know, knowing that we had to be in a place Yeah. before it started snowing. Or you were going to freeze. Yeah. We we're going to yeah. freeze. Yeah. So what yeah. about you? Any, any what uh, kind of challenges? Yeah. For, well, for us coming from the city, it was an adjustment. Either one of us lived this life early on in, in, in our years, we were both city born and raised, you know, kids. And so, um, I guess, I guess learning to, to, to realize that I didn't know as much as I thought I knew maybe. Ah, okay. Yeah. And then, uh, and then adjusting like, uh, you know, we had planned our first year to have an addition done for the cabin. It was going to be a barn slash living addition, and that didn't work out the first year. But now we've kind of moved on, and we're we're looking at different options. So um, that, was a, that was a blessing in, in yeah. disguise, you right. know. At the time, at the time, it didn't seem that way. At the time, it seemed really because we had the baby boy coming, and and um, we're in um, actually the same footprint as as Martin here, but uh, we don't have loft space in our mm -hmm. cabin, and so. Um, we were we were trying to come to terms with how we were going to all be able to fit in this one cabin with with all of us so um just being able to adapt i think and 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 uh, adjust to the curveballs that you get because it's never going to work out exactly as you envisioned that's for sure yeah that's for sure what's this say where's david jr oh that's who's that is that that's chad that's chad chad <laughs> lease bring uh Please, please. I'll find some more questions. Bring the baby you're... over here, real quick. Let's see. Chad wants to see the baby. He says, uh, Chad says that you struggle finding enough tires. Yes, I need tires, guys. If you guys are, uh, if you guys live in the area in North Idaho, and you guys have tires that old tires that you want to get rid of off your property, send me an email. Man. Go to my channel and then send me an email because I'll come get them. We just threw away four. Did you? Yeah, we did. Oh, that's no. Cool. I know it. Yeah, we I need tires, know. guys, for our Earthship build. So there's the baby boy. That's a uh, little Uriah. Hi, guys. Aww. And my beautiful wife, Lisa. Oh, I Chad says hi. <laughs> Let's see what else we got. Uh, from Pennsylvania. Sweet. Let's see. Are you done? Yeah, Are you over it? <laughs> Uh, is there a regulation or math for ventilation and plumbing? So asking about regulations and plumbing, yeah, there are. Um, so at least in our county, which I think is for the whole state of Idaho, you have to follow code and have inspections for plumbing and ventilation and all that. And so anyway, you could just look it up in a plumbing book and. and it varies whether it they're state or county. Yeah. What in the inspections? Right. So are. so plumbing is plumbing is a state thing. Electrical state, sewer is state, sewer and plumbing. They're two different things. Um, and yeah, so but the actual building itself is county regulated and there's there's no codes for that. So if you want to build a shack, you can, but you have to wire it properly if you want to have electricity. 
and plumb it properly if you want to have plumbing. Running extension I mean, cords from the You can do whatever you want on your TP. property, but if you want to sell it later and you want a price for it, you better do it right. Yeah. Or if you burn it down and you want your insurance to uh, cover it. There you go. It'd be good to do it right, huh? <laughs> Yeah, no extension cords to the teepee. That's right. Although we do have extension cords running along our floor right now. <laughs> like 10 of them strung together or something. Let's see. Um, oh, what's the name of your channel? Imagine Acre Wood. That's right. There is a link in the description to um, their channel. So you go ahead and click that link down below. Be sure to subscribe and um, do all that stuff. Hey, look at that. Living the Dream Homestead. Bruce Minez. What's that? Bruce, mine is. Okay. Jeremy, you've been drinking already early tonight, haven't you? Let's see. Are your homesteads really homesteads? That's a good question. Um, you want me to answer, answer that or you want to answer that? Um, it, it depends on Yeah, it depends on your definition. Uh, I will say we're trying the best we can yeah. to make it a homestead based on our def definitions. Um, I would say probably more homestead than some and not as homestead as some people would like us to be. Yeah. Right. And so, um, in like 1850 something, I think it was 1850 something. I don't know. While he was still alive, president Lincoln signed into effect the homestead act, right? Which opened up a lot of property in the United States, like millions and millions of acres of property for people to go and homestead. In other words, be the first person to live there, develop the land, and if you improve that property over a certain number of years, then you were given the deed to that property, right? And so that's like, in, a, in the United States, that's the traditional historic definition of homesteading. Now, does that still happen today? No, right? They're not giving away free property, right, in the United States like that anymore, at least as far as I know. And so homesteading now is, you're gonna to have to buy the property, right? And so does that mean that you're the first person there? No, it doesn't necessarily mean that. Even back then, somebody has a homestead and then they develop it and then they sell it to somebody else. Well, they're the new homesteader on a, on a homestead that's already been developed by somebody else, right? And so are they really homesteads? Maybe. There's also people people think that you have to be 100% self-sufficient from your homestead. That's that's the other one that people have a hang up uh, uh, yeah, on right. is, do you produce all your own food, all your own produce, all your own um, textiles? And, and no, I don't think in, any of us in the United States can actually do that unless you have um, maybe a commune. You know, maybe they can do right. that on communes or something maybe. like that. But um, it's, it's a tough go. Uh, it, especially, you know, you can't do it by yourself, that's for sure. Um, well, even even historically, right? So take take your homesteaders, right? That they left Missouri, they left St. Louis, Missouri, in a wagon train, and they traveled west to to their homestead property, right? Just bare land out in the wilderness with buffalo and bear, right? So what did what did they take with them, right? They took with them the latest modern technology that they had available to them. They took a giant wagon, right? They yeah. took a ton of um, hand tools. They probably took a cook stove with them. They took rifles. They took pistols. They took um, tons of supplies, as in flour, cornmeal probably, um, different types of meat that they would have preserved to take with them, um, horses. And they went out there and they did this. So for somebody to come to a piece of property now and do the same thing, to use whatever modern whatever technological resources you have available to establish that piece of property is the same thing. Right. It's just at a different level. Right. And then, right, so then you've got these guys out there and, and they're, they're out there in the wilderness with their family. They've got to build a shelter. Maybe it's a dugout. And they're using their supplies that they brought with them to eat because, I mean, okay, so they break the ground. The day they get there, they break the ground, right? Right. So they left early spring. They got there sometime midsummer. And maybe they're going to produce a crop that first year. Maybe. Right? And if they do, it's probably going to be one thing. Right? They're going to plant corn or they're going to plant wheat and maybe a vegetable garden. Right. right. And then they're going to have to sell that. Homestead people that had sugar, sugar doesn't come from the United States. Mm -mm. Right? I mean, that was, that that was, was someplace import. else. Yeah, that was an import. They brought in. If they had coffee, they didn't grow that coffee. Yep. Right? I mean, yep. there's no way. And so... 
they raised beef, then they sold it, it got on a train and it went to Chicago and got butchered, they got the money and they went out and bought more supplies, right? And so a homesteader, in my opinion, historically speaking, is not even self-sufficient. Right, You know. right. I mean, You're and always... their goal wasn't to be self-sufficient. Their goal was to start a farm, sell their crops, and grow and become wealthy. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, they want to improve their lifestyle. More more opportunity for their families, just yeah. like what right. most of us want, you know, yeah. a better, better so for our families to have it better than we had. Yeah. And, you know, there's also something to be said in, in modern times about... Um, about the skills to do this kind of stuff. It's something that you have to develop skills over time. So, you know, we're, we're, I'm not the same homesteader I was when I walked onto the property that I am today, and I hopefully won't be the same homesteader I am next year as I am today. You know, we're always growing and we're always getting better and we're always learning new skills. And, and I think that's one of the big things about being a homesteader is the mindset that you yeah, have. Right. Um, trying to make use out of things that you normally wouldn't make use out of. Um, if, uh, you know, if, if something throws you a curveball, you know, you, you, uh, you take it out of the gums and, and do the best you can with it. So um, that's what you got to do as a homesteader. Just be, be, uh, be able to adapt. Right. I mean, and, and I mean, if you have a ton of money, I mean, you could hire people to do all that stuff. Right. Right. I mean, right. if just like maybe probably not at the first part of the homesteading, but then later, right, if you develop your ranch a little bit, you're going to have cow hands to do it, you know, yeah. and to help you. And Yeah, everyone's got to go at their own pace or to, to their own means and to their own abilities. So, um, you and know. And their own desires, too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, do you really want to have a giant cow ranch? Right. I mean, maybe you do, but I don't. Right, right. It's, 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 it's. It, Homesteading is going to be different for everybody. It's just about the, the mindset of going out and accomplishing your idea of a homestead. Um, yeah. You're right. Sugar beets. Somebody said sugar beets are in the United States. That's true. Did they have sugar beets back then in the mid-1800s? Were they making sugar out of that then, or was that an import Are beets from, sugar from cane? Europe? Those are from, they, we've, beets are from the old world, right? They went a new world export from when we came. I don't know. Because I know potatoes are like a new world export. Potatoes were right. from, but I don't know about beets. I don't know I don't what know. beets have. Good point about the beets, though. Yeah. All right, man, we probably have something here now. Oh, boy. What do we got here? Uh, say, hi, Lisa. She's busy. Let's see. Are you coming to Florida to get the tires? Florida, no. Local. <laughs> local. Or, or you can mail them. Yeah, right? you can mail them. <laughs> what size tires are you looking for, Dave? Uh, any that we can get right now. Uh, uh, truck size tires would be good, um, but we, we need miscellaneous size right now, so it's just about accumulation, and then and then we can sort from there. Okay, about how many tires do you need? Uh, that's yeah. a good way to recycle. Yeah, that's right. Right? Um, Free building materials. It's just labor, so. Yeah. What time is it? It is, I don't know, probably around 7-something. 7? 7. 7.30, about 7.30. 7.30. Um... What is one plan you are looking forward to in the future? For me, I'm looking forward to building our garden, getting our garden established, and building a garage shop thing, hopefully this summer. What about you? Couple. Yeah, we uh, we have plans to build an earthship in the future, which is, if you don't know what an earthship is, it's a um, type of dwelling, a type of um, a living space. And uh, if you don't know what they are, go check them out. But um, that's what we plan to build for our living space in the future. Um, you don't fly or sail it? No, no, no. it's just it's stationary. stationary. <laughs> yeah. All right. Earthship. It's like super insulated with earth and yeah stuff. Let's see. Hey, Marty, big question. Uh, what was your most struggle when... Oh, we already answered that. Um, no illegally pulling trees out, laugh out loud. It bites. Yeah. Uh, so she had a tree on their property, like on the property line or, or like just on the other side. And it was, um, it was uh, messing with their foundation on their house. So they cut it down and they got a fine for it from like the government. She's in Australia. Yeah. But... Well, I mean, it doesn't sound much different than a lot of places here. Yeah, like if you're in the city, you can't just go no. cutting down trees willy-nilly. Let's see. Um, how do your families feel when you started homesteading? Mm. Was there any struggles? I think you go first this time. 
For us, um, we, we, I think one of the biggest struggles was we also took our children out of public schools and yeah. on to uh, homeschool at the time. And so um, that was an, a, a, an adjustment period for the children, learning how to, to, to homeschool. And also for me and Lisa to learn how to be parents that homeschool. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that was, that was an adjustment, but, uh, for me, for me and Lisa, we were both pretty much on board with doing this. So there wasn't any like hurdles in regards to that as you far weren't as like, we're going to go home. So she's like, I don't want to, right. no, we're going, right. That wasn't, it. that wasn't the case for yeah. us. No, we were both on the same page with it. It's cool. Yeah. I think for us just getting here and just getting started was, was, you know, the living, the living conditions, I guess, Yeah. you know, at first being in the tent, then it got cold. And it did snow before we actually got moved into our cabin. And so, like, we had, like, those buddy heaters in there. And the kids each had their own tent. And they were doing school in their tents, you know, and it's raining. or So, yeah. That was like know. Tent City over here. It was like Tent City. We could have probably been arrested or something. <laughs> Who knows? If we were in Seattle, it would be okay. Yeah, just make sure right in, right in downtown there. That's right. Don't even need a toilet over there. Right? Just go anywhere. Let's see, Doug and Stacy off-grid living are fairly close to off-grid, but not totally. Okay, let's talk about that really quick. Um, what is off-grid? Okay, so that's, I think some of the, um, I think some of the TV, like reality TV shows, you know, have kind of taken off-grid and, and taken it further than the definition of off-grid, right? So if you just look up off-grid in the dictionary, then you're going to know what off-grid means. And it just means not connected to one or more public utilities. That's it. I mean, that's off-grid. And so, um, are you off-grid? Yeah, I'd say yeah, but a lot of people say no because we use propane. Okay. So that's another, th you know, yep. like people will say if you're connected to gas sources in any way, you're still connected to a chain. But as yeah. far as being connected to public utilities where we pay a monthly bill, you know, no, we're not, we're, we're not on grid. We're right. entirely off grid. Right. And so in, in my opinion, technically, although I would be like, yeah, okay, right. But technically, if you, if you have power run to your house from the grid, right, and you're tied into a sewer system from the city, but you have a well, technically, according to the definition, you're off grid at least partially, because that's one public utility that you're not connected to, which is water. Right? Gotcha. But I think both of us would be like, mm, yeah. yeah, okay, yeah, whatever. Right, right. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so, you know, we have, we have internet, obviously, we're live streaming. It is wireless, right? Mm -hmm. So through the cell system, I consider that off-grid because we're not physically tied to any grid. You can be off-grid and live like you're living in the 1800s and you can be off grid and live like you're living in the, the you know the modern century so right. there's there's that's it's just all about where you want to be and what your needs are but yeah. just because you have things that everybody else has in the modern world doesn't mean you're not off grid it just means you're 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 powering those things in a different way so lots right. of people will say oh you, you know you have cell service you have access to the internet so you're right. still on grid that sort of thing but um so so let's just say Okay, you have like you like you're using a horse and a buggy, right? And you're plowing with a, a plow behind a plow horse, right? Um, you have no solar panels, no nothing, and you use kerosene lamps for your light, right? Where'd you get the kerosene? Right. right. Aren't you on grid? Yeah. Right. I yeah, mean, you had it's, you had to source it somewhere. Right. Or what? Are you burning like beef tallow <laughs> candles or something <laughs> that you made yourself? <laughs> right. I mean, yeah, it's like yeah. impossible. Yeah. Yeah. Totally yeah, and you have to hunt with a wood spear too, because if you bring you a rifle with you, yeah. you know you're having to source gunpowder somewhere, and it's just it gets really nitpicky for some people. But um, the idea of off grid is just about uh, being as independent. independent as you yeah. can be from other sources. Right. Yeah. Independent I mean, and and self reliant. Although we can never be totally, we can never be self reliant. Right? right. I mean, spiritually, we can never be self reliant because we true. need Christ. Right, community-wise, we can never be self-reliant. I mean, that's why solitary confinement is such a bad thing, right? Yeah. Because you need community. So yeah. you can never be totally self-reliant like that. I mean, maybe somebody could, right? But typical people. There's been a couple of hermits, and they write yeah. books about them. So. Right. 
Yeah. <laughs> they live in a cabin in the woods in Alaska. And, yeah. You know. <laughs> we had a cool one here in Idaho that, that was living out. I think it was on the... Uh, can't remember. It might have been... I think it was on the Snake River, but he wore a cool, like, old conquistador metal hat really down the woods yeah he lived okay. in a cave so but yeah idaho has a, a history of hermits that, that have lived long times but they always got excited when somebody came down the river and visited you know uh -huh. so. yep so yeah man i mean you got clothes they're from the grid you got a car it's from the grid all kinds of stuff all right let's see mm. dave what do you like most about your oil kerosene lamps and can you give us one tip? Your, your number one tip. Oh, yeah, yeah. So um, I like the nostalgia of okay. the kerosene lamps. You know, yeah. we've, got, we've got modern battery-powered lamps, LED lamps and things like that that we can light with. And then we've also, we do have um, a modest solar um, array at our, at our cabin that we can power lights with when we need lights. So we do have modern lights. But um, for me, I like to burn the lamps at night because it gives me a, I don't know, a warm, fuzzy feeling. It's like yeah. a nostalgia thing, you know. Um, so that's the number one thing. They, they, my lamps were actually in it. it things that I inherited from my, my great grandmother. So they also have a special meaning to me in regards to that. But, um, as far as a tip, I'd say, um, you know, figure out what kind of wick cutting you like and, uh, it make just, a difference. It does. Yeah. It'll make a difference. On what the are the flame. different ways? So, um, the, the ways that I've kind of played with is, is you obviously you can just go a flat wick, right? Okay. It like it comes with, um, you can cut it into a curve. Huh. Okay. Okay. Um, you can peak it. And then okay. you can even do a double peak where you cut a V in the, oh, cut a v in the, in the middle, middle and then do a double peak. And that makes it like it burn different. It'll make it burn different and it, the light output is totally different. Um, how it how it flickers in the wind, things like that are totally different. Oh, really? So That's it just cool. depends on how you want. I'm partial to the curve. Um, okay. It seems to be the most stable. So, um, but yeah. They're, they're fun. Just play with them. The, uh, put them in a safe location, especially if you have cats or kids. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, but and, and always, if you guys do decide to burn them, keep, you know, fire extinguishers are a good idea to have around, especially, if, I mean, if you heat your house with wood, even, yeah. you know, have fire extinguishers. So um, we don't even have a fire extinguisher. Yeah. Lisa's almost burnt down too many houses. So <laughs> we have them in every room. Well, but, um, have you have you looked into like the ones the the wicks that are like a like a tube? Yeah. And also the Aladdin ones. It's like a yeah. So I have a couple of the small Hong Kong lamps. They're like real small, and they run on the tube wicks, and the wick just goes right through. It's like um, the wick is maybe the size of like I don't know the pole cord on your lawnmower or something like that. You know. Okay. Uh huh. And it just feeds right through. I love. Sure. Uh, no, no, it doesn't. What's so what makes them? Like, it what draws. Makes them good? It draws from the from below through the uh, chimney. Okay. Through the glass okay. chimney that uh -huh. you put on top. So you put it on top and the lamp. Yep. But it's a but it's a tube wick. Yeah, but it's a tube wick. Huh. I like them. I think they're a little bit more stable, um, and they seem to put off better light, in my opinion. Um, even the small ones that I have, they make bigger ones, but I have the small Hong Kong ones. One small little lamp that's like that will put off as much lamp light as one of the lamps that are like oh, wow. big. But really, in the flat wicks, I think I run, I think they're inch and a half wicks or inch and a quarter, something like that. Maybe inch and a quarter. Yeah. Um, I like the rope wicks better. But you have to find huh. lamps that run them. Go to Goodwill, guys. Goodwill is a good place to get lamps, too. I see them there all the time. Yard sales, too, probably. Yard sales, yep. People just have them and they never use sales. them. Yeah, they just, I mean, how many of you have grandparents where you walked in their house and they had an old oil lamp sitting on the TV or something like that, you know, yeah. and, and it never got lit. But um, so you'll still find them at estate sales and stuff. I know you can get them at Walmart and stuff like that, but they're not made the same. You know, they're they're made overseas and things That's like that. That's where ours that. is from. Yeah. Ours is from Walmart. I mean, yeah. the Hong Kong lamps, those are made overseas, but they were made a lot better. So modern yeah. stuff's just not made as fun as it was in the old right. days. You know? Yeah, not as quality. Yeah. Not as heavy and all that. Let's see here. What do we got? Let's see, I sometime plan to visit North Idaho when I grow up. And I want to go to Fried Hardeman when I grow up too. Sweet, Sarah Young. That's awesome. Where are you from? Uh, awesome is here. Um, but, uh, silly. <laughs> Just do the best you can. That's right. 
Although if there was a trophy for it, I guess that'd be kind of cool, but. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I have a hollow log. I'll show you. David, you, you play with them for a minute. Yeah. If I could pick it up, it might be too heavy. Yeah, let's see what we got here, guys. So yeah, guys, up here we have lots of uh, big hollow stuff. We'll have, um, it was cedar forest up here in North Idaho for a very long time. Um, dense old growth cedar. And you guys can still, if you guys come to North Idaho and hike around the woods, you'll still find some of that old growth stumpage out in the woods. Um, that's, it's a hundred years old, so uh, big stumps. Couldn't get it. Yeah, too big. Too big. <sighs> One of the first movies I remember in that movie. And I'd never really, seen, so that's kind of cool. Lots of stumps in North Idaho. Property. Um, and can you explain it? Uh, can you explain the service? Um, a timber, we have reduced prop, but, um, ours is just listed as a primary residence. Okay. So. so, I mean, I don't know what your property taxes are, but you could save a significant amount of money by doing that, by doing that, just yeah. filling it out. And yeah. then, but, oh, so what else you have to do with that is you have to have a state licensed forester come out and then he'll like do a survey of your property. And it's kind of cool because. I mean, obviously he knows about your forest, right? And so he will tell you um, what types of trees you have on there. He will tell you um, if there's any disease in your forest and what the disease is. And then he will help you, well, he will actually make up the plan. And then if you want to follow it, you can, but but he will make a plan for you on how to manage your property. Like, like ours is way too dense, right? We have way too many trees on our property for it to be at the optimum health for producing timber. And so, um, so part of our plan is we need to thin like our whole property, which is like a billion trees. And that's same thing in our place. Yeah. Lots of thinning. So, I mean, that's cool, but that costs like 400 bucks to have a, a forester come out, but you'll save, we saved like almost three times that much on our taxes the next year nice. for that. So. That was cool. Yeah. I know there's other exemptions too, if farmland yeah. exemptions right. and like, so look in your county, you know, check and take a look at your local county and ordinances yeah. and. Let's see. Have either of you heard of crystal radios? They run energy free and good antenna. No, I've never heard of a crystal radio. You ever heard of crystal radio? Uh -huh. No. You piqued my interest though. That's right. Something to, to YouTube later, I guess. That's right. There's a P.O. box down in the description below. There you go. Send us some crystal radios. <laughs> well, check it out. Um, did your water storage tank freeze up in the past winter? I'll let you talk about that. We both have the same tank, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. So um, ours did. Um, it didn't. Well, so the t full the tank didn't freeze solid like an ice cube. Um, we run PEX, so we run ha uh, full inch PEX out of our tank and then we go to three quarter and then into half. Um, but we did have at the joints, at the brass joints that we have for those PEX, we did have some freezing of the actual lines, but our tank is not buried at all. So our tank just sits right on the ground and we did no insulation. So um, we had maybe three weeks of the winter where that, that line froze solid and we weren't able to actually use from the outside tanks. We do store water inside as well because of that. We made, we made um, some, um, some changes to the inside of the cabin and we store water inside because we kind of were worried about it. Um, and, and last so year you had problems with freezing. We did. Last right? year, well, last year we were on an existing cistern that the previous owner had put into the cabin. And so um, we ran into a lot of issues with that. And then um, this year it was, it was, it was better because we had the inside tank. So um, going into next winter we're gonna bury like martin so we'll have the tank hopefully buried and and uh we'll see yeah. how that goes i mean those tanks are about what like six feet tall probably around there yeah something like that and probably so um that. ours is buried probably f i don't know three feet three or four feet probably buried in the ground and so the water comes out of the bottom of the tank of course right so that's three feet underground so that didn't freeze but we did have a couple of inches of ice on the top and that didn't, that didn't cause any problems for us. We were told that it could because like basically it would seal the top and then when the pump goes, it'd like create a vacuum, yeah, you know? Yeah. But it didn't seem to do that. We broke it a couple times with like a piece of a conduit. And we, we did have a, like a tank heater that we put in there. We used it a couple times, but then we just never really used it. Yeah, a little hint when you're breaking through your ice in the wintertime, don't use 
a big heavy metal rod and something that you can poke through the bottom because when you go and it goes through the ice. So I made the mistake with some, I have some metal metal troughs and I punched holes through them. This oh winter. really? Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. The plastic holds up better. I mean, you can you can punch through with metal pretty good and uh, the plastic, it'll, it'll just kind of like, you know, shrug it off. But if you have like uh, tin or aluminum or whatever they are, those, you know, the feeding, the, the, the metal waters you can punch right through those real easy with a oh, metal man. rod so okay. be careful guys <laughs> especially if you're like yeah trying to chop through a, a foot of ice you know uh, yeah that would be bad especially if you're talking a 2500 gallon yeah. water tank man <laughs> i mean how are you going to get down there to fix it and it's frozen you know i mean it's you already... imagine watching that water oh, pour dude. down the hill in the middle of winter that would be terrible <laughs> that would be terrible let's see um we have to pay for firewood every time. See so you guys cutting the stuff down. I think bonus. Yeah, it is a bonus. It's awesome. David's got tons of firewood on his place too to cut down. Keeps you in shape too. Let's see. Um, what job do you do? What job do you do? You do a job? I uh, am a full-time homesteader right now. So um, I, uh, again, before coming out to the homestead, I was in retail mer merchandising pretty much since I was 18 years old, moved all the way up to where I was a um, regional um, uh, manager and uh, managed four states in, in the United States and hundreds of employees. And um, so it, the reason we moved off grid is so we could not have to grind like that anymore. So we could not have to grind um, in order to, you know, constantly in the grind, constantly working so that way we could pay bills or, or do whatever the next thing is we wanted to do. So um, we made sacrifices in our income in order to be together, um, m spend more time together. So. Um, that's what I do. I'm I'm a I'm a dad. I'm a father. Um, I'm a husband, and I'm a homesteader right now. So, let's go. Cool. Yeah. So, basically the same for us. Um, the question came up: How do you earn money? We, um, as far as like career goes, I guess main sources of income are um, our website and our YouTube channel, and then um, we also help the church here some, and so they help us some as well. And so, but that's just that's just a little bit. Um, but mostly it's from our blog and I guess we're bloggers and YouTubers. That's what we are. That's where our income comes from. 2020. That's right. Let's see. All right. Let's see if we got anything else here. Um, okay. Fire. We're back to where we were. Let's see. Hey, from Texas. Have you rocked the perimeter yet? Um, probably. We can't find two corners. So we've been really close to it. We might've been on the neighbor's property. Maybe. I don't know, but. Pretty much walk the perimeter, you? Yeah, we have all our quarters marked. He's got an awesome piece of property. <laughs> it's like, um, it's like he's got like a Lion King kind of rock. <laughs> I mean, like you go up, like where, where his cabin is, and then you can like go out Pride and go out and around. Yeah, and it's like this this big like rock outcropping up there, and you can like look down. They have a they have an awesome view. They get a cool piece of property. Um, earth batteries. There's another interesting research project originally used to power the telegraph. Earth batteries. Mm. Well, sounds cool. Huh. All that kind of alternative stuff interests me a lot. Um, are you planning on getting yaks? Am I planning on getting yaks? No, I'm not. Um, I don't have a plan for yaks. I'd like to get I'd like to get a couple sheep and a couple goats that I could raise, meat goats that I could raise up and butcher and then eat them and see if I like them and then Whichever one I like the most, then raise those. Ooh, I love goat. Goat's yeah. tasty. It's one of so, my favorites. That's what I'd like to do. But um, but as far as getting yaks, I don't I don't know. A buffalo might be cool, but I think they're pretty aggressive. I don't know. Yeah, there's that one down on the uh, heading out towards um, heading out towards like uh, do going out to my place, but going like from if you're going to like Willie's and Bill's, like yeah. going out that way. Oh yeah, that, uh -huh. yeah. Uh, that farm they have a big big male buffalo out yeah. there all the time. That's right. I like my buffalo on my nickel. Yeah. Um, what does land cost where you are? I say right now, probably around 10,000 an acre. Wouldn't yeah. you say? Yeah. Probably about that. I mean, right now. You never, I, I don't know how many people are buying or selling right now, yeah. but yeah, if, if it hasn't slowed down or if it's, it's, it's hanging kind of where it was. Yeah. 
And it depends on area too. I yeah. mean, you know, if you're talking just this county, um, availability is the big issue in inside this county. Right. And then property that is available sometimes is like five miles down a dirt road that's never plowed and right. up three mountains. You right. know what I mean? It could be like way out there. We saw some beautiful property that was like 20 acre piece. We could afford it. It was in our budget. But it was so far out of Samuels, yep. up on top of a mountain. You be know? prepared for some 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 winter maintenance too. If you come out here looking for property, yeah. you... we wouldn't we wouldn't have gotten out. Right. I mean, there's no way. Yeah. We would have been snowed in all winter, especially this year. You know, or last winter. Let's see. Um, stay safe, sir. Okay. Let's see. Jacob says, hey, Marty, what should I do? My future videos. Any suggestions? Uh, something that you like. Something that you're excited about because it's going to come across in your videos. That's what I would say. Uh, get um, Download download um, the plugin, the Chrome plugin called TubeBuddy, and um, that can help you with doing some keyword research and finding like how to, how to words that you ought to put in your title and, and talk about in your in your video a little bit. That can help you with some of that kind of keyword research stuff. Called Tube Buddy. All right, land cost, we got that. Uh, would you get any yaks to add? Would you, will you get any yaks? Oh, we already answered that. Um, like the property I've seen there in Idaho. It's awesome, I like the property I've seen here too. Ducks, what's your opinion of ducks? They smell they horrible. Sm really? Horrible ducks. Like the actual duck or because of like their the, droppings? The, the mud that they make. They kind of make a mess. They're like really messy. Okay. And so we've done ducks in the past. Um, but they make a muddy mess and you're constantly trying to keep them in water. Um, if you don't have a pond or something like okay. that. Um, they, they make a huge mess with their water. And uh, their, their poo kind of smells. To me anyways. To, to me they're the, the most smelly bird you can have. You just offended like a million duck owners out there. I know. <laughs> All right, there you go, ducks. I don't really have an opinion of ducks. Um, I don't know much Their about them. Their eggs are good. They're rich. Really? Good eggs. Let's see, we got that one. Uh, we raise sheep for meat. Uh, great grazers and fine eating. This is the country homestead preacher. That's awesome. Like sheep, adult sheep, or do you guys do lambs or both? I always wonder about sheep because I only ever see lamb for sale as or lamb. I don't see like sheep for sale in the market. Oh, right? yeah. Huh? Like, yeah. You see lamb chops. You see like. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think have you, you ever them. seen have you ever seen like, like adult sheep? Yeah, adult like, sheep for sale. What do they call it? Is that mutton? Is that what they call that's, that? That's sheep meat. It's mutton. Mutton. Yeah. So that's like an adult sheep. Oh, I don't it's know. Mutton, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Tell us. We don't know much about sheep. See, Wyoming's $900 an acre. Whew. That's cheap. And I bet that would depend on what part of Wyoming you're yeah, in. Yeah, I'd imagine how far you are from, from hospital, how far yeah. you are from, uh, you know, How close like you that. are to Yellowstone, right? Eastern Wyoming, I would bet, is a lot cheaper than Western Wyoming. That's just my thoughts. Um, how do you guys coping with the virus in your area? We're coping good. Are you coping well? Yeah, yeah. Uh, for homesteaders, for a lot of homesteaders, I don't think it was a lot of change. I mean, it was some routine change. Obviously, we miss congregating um, and uh, and worshiping together, and we also miss, you know, some of that uh, more frequent contact with friends. Um, you know, hugs and 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 things like that. So that's that's a uh, that's a change. But as far as day to day lifestyle, a lot of us as homesteaders are on our homestead a lot to begin with. Right. So it was it that was less of a, a change for us as it was for some people. I couldn't imagine being in New York in like a studio apartment Amanda. being quarantined. Could you imagine yeah, that? Yeah, and you're having your kids at home. Right, right. And it's like we're we both homeschool, you know, so that yeah. could change. And all the neighbors are home too at the same time, you know. So I I mean but for us, being uh, as remote as we are and being um, doing the things that we do, it wasn't it wasn't too bad coping. I mean, it hasn't been bad coping. Yeah, and we have like very few cases in our in our yeah, area. Yeah, we've been very blessed in so. in in the Panhandle of Idaho. Yeah. Let's see. 
Are you getting tired yet? Whatever, whenever you're ready. All right, and then we'll going. just keep on going until you guys we'll, run out we'll of good lose, questions. We'll lose light eventually. Yeah, maybe here, until but... we get too dark. Let's see. Um, hey, hello, Martin. Hope things are going okay. I have been since you started building. Oh, you're Houston, Texas. Sweet. Uh, Mutton is goat. Really? Oh. I thought that was Chevron. Huh. Chevron? Let's go. Anyway, I'm confused. Let's see. Um, I believe over a year old, it's called mutton. Okay, over a year old, it's called mutton. Sarah is playing with her friends, David's kids, and Seth. I guess that's her friend too. I love worshiping with brothers in Christ. Yeah, no kidding. We certainly missed that. No doubt about that. Uh, but here in Idaho, guys, oh, here's a little thing. In Idaho now, um, starting May 1st, from what I read from the governor, um, we're going into the first stage of reopening. And so churches can reopen now. And so we're planning on being at the building Sunday morning. If you guys are in town, then um, come and hang out with us. I'll be there. Chevron, exclamation point. David never gets tired. Robert N. Do you know Robert N.? I, there's a few Roberts. Maybe he is on my channel. I'm not sure. Hey, Robert, I try. I, I, trust me, I do get tired. <laughs> uh, what are we cooking for dinner? Oh, we had, um, well, we had this fire going here. It's kind of dying down now. That fire right there. And we cooked, we cooked hamburgers. I had hot a double, dogs. a double burger. I had a triple. You're and, good. Um, better with cheddars. That's what we cooked. Some uh, Julie made some some mash or what? No, no, not mashed potatoes. T potato salad. Yep. And Lisa, Lisa made some some uh, black eyed peas and cornbread. Yeah. Good. So we had all that for dinner. Let's see, David. How do you feel with Chad possible move? Yeah. Um, I, so you guys, you guys obviously follow Chad um, and Shelby over at North Country Off Grid, um, uh, which are friends of ours. And um, you know, I hope he sticks around. I think uh, I think he'll find Idaho is the best when he goes uh, on his road trip if he ever gets to do that. But um, I, I hope he sticks around. Uh, he's my good buddy. So, um, but uh, I'd understand if 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 his choice was to. Uh, find something else better that that's more fitting to, to him and his family's needs as well. So There you go Let's see Sarah's with her friends Chevron and mutton are both goat meat Really? Okay. We'll take your word it's for so it. It's so funny anytime you hear in the comments It's like you, you get like five different <laughs> answers, right? Yeah. And you're not sure which one so we got it. We, we're gonna have to go do research on our own, I guess. Uh, what's the comment about the tractor hydraulic pump noise? You know, I don't know. I looked through the comments and um, I didn't see anybody say what it was. So I don't know. We're going to have to, I'm waiting for them. I got to get a manual for it. And then um, we can dig into that a little bit more. I don't know if the noise is normal or not. It could be normal. So I'm not sure about that. So if you guys haven't seen that video, it's the last video we put up. Listen to the noise of the tractor and tell me what that noise is. Um, all of you great channels. Our cabin in the woods. Well, thank yeah, you. Yeah. See, so when do you think this pandemic will be over? Tomorrow. I don't know. Enjoy your video. This is the last one right here. Doug Campbell. Looks like you're getting the last one. Oh, you're not the last one anymore. All right, let's come up here. Um, Martin, are you using the well you and Julie drilled? I use it to make YouTube videos about. <laughs> That's about it. We went swimming down in the creek earlier, you know, in the pond he's got going down there. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, it doesn't produce enough water. And um, so we're just not doing nothing with it. We're just hauling water and eventually we'll drill a well, but that's not really high on the priority right now because you really want to know why? You want to know why it's not a high priority? Why? I'll tell you why. You guys might think this is a stupid idea, but because building a well costs so much money, right? It's gonna cost us say $15,000, right? If you're lucky. Yeah, if we're lucky, right? Yeah. It's gonna cost this much money. Building something like a shop or a garage is gonna cost about the same amount of money, okay? 
How many videos can I make about drilling a well? Two maybe, right? Three if I stretch it. How many videos can I make about building a shop? A whole summer's worth, right? And so it's, there it's you really- you guys go meat and potatoes, <laughs> real, right? That's, yeah. that's what it's about. I mean, um, if you're a YouTuber, I mean, we, we've got to keep our audience entertained. You guys will go away if we don't, so. Right, and it's a whole, it's a business thing too, you know, I mean, We'll we'll grow it. We'll grow our channel building. We're not going to grow our channel drilling a well, and so that's 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 how that goes, man. You got to do what you got to do. Let's see, South Carolina. Any decisions? Summertime meetup. I think the summertime meetup. Well, it was on before all the quarantine thing happened. I know uh, Jeremy had reserved the Athol Park for us. Is that the where, where the water is? That's where the water is. Okay. Yep, yep. Yeah. So if you've watched both mine and Martin's videos, um, that's where we were hauling water through the winter. Is um, there there at Athol Park? Um, that's where they were going to have it, and I wanted to say it was at the end of June, right? I think it was. I yeah. think it was at the, the last week of June. So um, you guys can go check out Living the Dream Homestead. They have a video about that with the announcement in regards to all of that. Last I heard it was still on, but I know with all of these um, restrictions, I don't know what the restrictions are going to be in place at that time. So yeah. as far as, as far as I understand now, if all of the restrictions are lifted, I would assume we're on for the meetup, but, um, it'll depend on, on the governor's restrictions and, and how things go through summer, I guess, yeah, through the beginning right. of summer. So yeah, that'd be cool. Are you coming from, what was it? South Carolina? That'd be awesome. Yep. South Carolina. Let's see. Great answer. Laugh out loud. All right, let's see. Um, <laughs> all right, we'll just skip that one. Let's see, uh, the stream, amazing so far. Awesome, thank you. So I'm trying to figure out plans for my English and Indonesian channel. Let's see, I saw the park in someone's channel. Probably, oh, you showed the park, I think. I think you talked about it in one of your videos. Well, you and Julie there. went to one, one time, too. I and think we it? both did videos. Okay. Yeah. Well, I know yeah. we made videos about the water, but I just don't remember if I showed the park. I think I don't think I showed the park. I think uh, Jeremy did a video where he walked around in the park. Okay. So maybe that's where he saw it was Jeremy at Living the Dream Homestead. You showed the security camera. I did, yeah. <laughs> the Pelco camera. Shout out Fresno, California. Is that where they're from? Yep. Let's see. Um, a shop will... Eventually bring in some money. So Martin, you made plans. Yep, plans are to make shop. As in, what do you plan to make? Oh, what do you plan to make in the shop? Um, storage. <laughs> <laughs> storage. Yeah, I don't know. I have some ideas. You know, because we have so many small trees here. What I thought um, would be kind of a cool thing to do. I don't know if you guys would like it or not, but uh, hopefully you do. But it coasters, right? So like cut the cut the trees and then cut them thinly into coasters and like you know sand them yeah. and stain them. Yeah. And then like the stack of coasters would be like the tree. You know, what you I mean, you have like a like a a brand. Yeah, that'd be cool. Your, yeah, like a logo. Them. Psh, yeah, brand. and then you can sh right on the burn it right on the center with the wood burning kit. You that'd know? be cool. Yeah. yeah, that's one thing I like to try. And then processing honey in there, processing animals in there, you know, things like that. It'd be it would be useful. But All homesteaders need places to store hay, places to to store your tools, things like yeah. that. Um, but that's for cool. sure, place to park the tractor. Yeah. Who knows? Let's see, Kyle, you're still here. That is Julie's cousin. What's up, Julie's cousin? I would buy some of those. You would? Sweet. All right then. Maybe next winter we'll make some of those. Not yeah, do them with the birch and then like keep the bark rustic, cool, huh? you know, yeah. like natural on there. That'd We've got cool. a couple small birch right over there we could cut yeah. down too. I cut a special tree down just for that. I think cedar would look good too, though. Cedar would, yeah. 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 But we'll see. You, the tamarack's nice too. The larch. That's yeah. A, it's a nice when you when you get to slicing it. I mean, it it comes out real clean. You know, like, and you, plus it's what's cool is when you got like so many trees like we do, the trees that are like in the forest. That are stunted they have a ton of growth rings yeah and they're still small yeah you yeah. know where you get a tree like like these ones right over here 
those growth rings are going to be really big. Right. But right. those ones that are stunted in the middle of the forest that you need to clear just out anyway. They've been choked out for, yeah. you know, they're, they're 30 year old trees that look like, you know, five, six, six year old trees because they've just been choked out. Hi, Marty and friend. Hey, Dina Wise. She is a sister, Christ, from Price, Utah. Awesome. Her husband is like um, super hunter. Oh, wow. Okay. And, um, well, I mean, she is too. But they have dogs, and they go and they um, they tree mountain lions, and um, he kind of like, I think if I'm not mistaken, has like a guide service kind of, or That's like awesome. takes people out to to track mountain lions. Yeah, and all that, that sounds cool. They get a cool cabin out in the middle of the. It's kind of like desert out there I'd in like Price. To do something like that sometime. Is all that right, Dana? You go ahead and say yay or nay. Maybe I, maybe I made something up, but I'm pretty sure I was all right. Then they have like their dogs. I think they have GPS on them, so like if they run off, so they, they can, can like track, track them. them. Yeah. That's cool. All right. Uh, great. We already saw the great answer. Rainwater harvesting, maybe you harvest rainwater. We do. Yeah. Um, Idaho offers unique challenges with harvesting rainwater because in the winter time you have snow shed to deal with with your gutters. Yeah. And so um, we were catching rain, but we had a section of our gutters where um, I was trying to keep up on it through winter. Really, it's about keeping up on maintenance to where your ice sheet that's building up on the edge of your roof is not attaching itself to your gutters. Mm. Um, if it starts to attach yourself to your gutters, then you're going to get an ice cube buildup in your gutters. And, and then so it's going to like pull the gutter off? It's going to pull the gutter off as it comes to, to shed off the roof. So we did have a section where I thought I had kept it clear, but in the section that we get the most kind of, it's right above our stove, so we get the most um, runoff there. Oh, yeah. uh -huh. And the most freezing there as well because of that in the in the in the nighttime it freezes. And so when we when we had it shed, we did have a little section where it luckily it didn't take the gutter with it, but it bent it out a little yeah. bit. So I gotta get up there and fix it a little bit. It bowed it out a little bit. Gotcha. We are not collecting rainwater because our roof is not finished yet. Um, we were trying to get our roof on before it started snowing, and we only got halfway last year. And so now we are going to wait to put the roof on until we make sure we're not going to use the wood stove anymore because we got to take the chimney out so we can put the, the roof on over where the chimney was. And then we'll just leave it out and put it back in next fall. Yeah. But, um, but anyway, we're not, but we do plan to as soon as we get the roof finished to put gutters on. Guys, it is getting dark here. Um, we're going to have to go here real soon. Let's see. Let's see. What was the material cost to get your house to its current level? Bar park. I don't know, guys. I know. I know. I keep saying that I'm going to work that up and tell you guys. I just haven't done it yet. So, I don't know. I, can't, I don't even want to try to figure it out right now. It's too, too difficult on my brain. What's up, Scott? I think we are. Um, I think uh, actually I this answered one? that. Yeah, just oh, a yeah. few minutes ago. I think um, I think we are, but it'll depend on on governor's restrictions at the time. So um, Jeremy was reserving all that, so Jeremy would know a little bit more than I do about it. Uh, hidden hit uh, that was Hidden Valley Homestead, Scott. Had it, Hidden Valley Homestead. Cool. Me. Let's see. I guess that's gonna be it. Oh, I'll send out an email. Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah, I think end of June is when we were looking. Hey, Sil. Nice to see you tonight. If I didn't see you already. Ooh, how do you say that from the UK? Charlie Brown. Essex? Essex? Essex. 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 I, I, I don't it's know. Essex. Essex. That's cool, man. From the UK. So we have people from, oh, from Trinidad everywhere yeah all over the place guys all right we're gonna go ahead and and wrap this up um just for fun put in the chat right now where you're from okay where you're where you're watching from and then we'll go ahead and close that's a nice upbeat kind of thing yes bear lion hounds bear and lion hounds that's dina um very similar to yours i like that. Oh, our house is very similar to ours I was thinking, I don't have any bear, lion, hound. What kound. kind of, uh, is that like a breed, bear and lion, hound? Or is that like, like, because we've got German short hair pointer, um, and we've got a Weimaraner, but I don't know what kind of, what kind of breeds? Is it a specific breed? Tell us what breed. Let's see, we got Canada, Colorado, Columbus, Ohio, Ohio, Utah, Toronto, Canada, Oregon, Florida, Tennessee. 
All right, I think we're starting there, Tennessee. Let's come on down. Uh, Sonoma County, Northern California. Plot hounds. Plot hounds, okay. I'll have to check those out. It's an English bulldog, somebody said. Let's see, Dublin. No, Durban, South Africa. Wow, South Africa. Brisbane, very close to north, north of Sydney. There we go, and now we know where it is. Ohio, um, Chicago, or outside of Chicago. Java. East Java, Alberta, Victoria, Victoria, Canada. I've been to Victoria, Canada. There was a, you know, there was a guy, when I first started on YouTube, I was, my inspiration, one of the people that inspired me was from Victoria. And that was actually, I started motovlogging. Motorcycle, yeah. GoPro, right? Uh, microphone in the helmet. I started motovlogging and um, his name was Ride Victoria. He was one of the guys that inspired me. That's cool. Like, did he do like Enduro, like what did they call yeah, it? He had a, or whatever? Yeah, he had a Yamaha 250. And he kind of ride trails, and sometimes he was in town on pavement, but but it was basically like storytelling on a motorcycle. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. That was cool. Anybody else here? Canada, Victoria. Um, wow, where is that? Savalbed. Savalbard. I have no idea where that is. Do you know where that is? No, that sounds uh, somewhere up in the north. <laughs> <laughs> Melbourne. <laughs> Plot hounds, what did they say? Russia, was that the same guy? Or just oh, a different I don't know. Guy? I don't know. When will you finish the roof? Before winter. Vermin. I wonder where that, oh, Vermont. Vermont, yeah. Let's see, I remember those vlogs. Indonesia. Iowa. Pennsylvania. IA, where's that? Iowa, right? Is that Iowa? Yeah, it's Iowa. Really? Okay, Iowa. Look, I'm learning something new every day. Pennsylvania. Um, I'm glad you don't do those. It made her scared watching them, yeah. I remember, I think that you got on me, Dina, for, um, for riding and taking my hand, like, talking with my hands while I'm driving down the road, <laughs> like, taking my hands off the handlebars. I'm pretty sure that that was you that got on me for that. Anyway, um, the hollow log, a hollow log in Tennessee. Jakarta, and are your vlogs posted? Yes, they are. They're Let's all... go, John. One last question. Hit us up. Yes. Yes, I did. All right. Last question or last thing coming up. Last one. Dina's the last. So whoever comes up next, we'll say goodnight after that. Because you can barely see me, Yeah, I, think. I know, right? It's getting dark. There we go. When did you start YouTube? 2015, I think. August 2000... 2015, maybe. I think it was 2015. How about you? For us, it's about been about two years since we put our first video up, but we weren't, we were really off and on at the beginning. Yeah. So if you go to my channel, like you're obviously you're on my channel now. Click on the videos at the top there. Click on videos, and then I think it's over on the right. You can sort all of the videos. You can go oldest first, and so then you could go to the oldest ones first. And if you want to see like young Marty riding motorcycles, my channel was called Riding Java back then. And um, you could see young Marty riding a motorcycle. All right, we're going to go now. Have a good night. Do we have porch lights? No, man, we're sitting out in the woods right now. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Uh, thanks for hanging out. Make sure you check out David's channel and um, subscribe. Hit the bell notification. Leave him a comment and let him know that you came from our channel. He'll go over there and say, Marty sent me. Thanks, guys. Have see a good night. See you guys next time. Yep.